you are invited to a live online satsang with Maharishi Kapriti this Sunday. To know more, click the link in the description below. My name is Richard. The last time uh, I met you in the video live satsang, uh, you told me uh, you're not in love with anybody. For me, this, this is a catastrophe. I've, I cannot touch the love and my life has come to a halt. Whatever I try doesn't work out. I have no specific question. It's just like placing that before you. Maybe you have something. How old are you, Richard? I'm 71. So why do you want to spend the beautiful, these beautiful years of your life um, wanting things and not getting them? And why not just be? Just to be? You don't like that idea? I have no idea how that would be. For example, you're there in your house, or you take a walk on the street, and you just look at this amazing miracle that you're surrounded by, that you are, just to live, you're breathing, you're healthy, you're, you have this, the possibility to experience so many things. Isn't that enough? Isn't it a beautiful thing that you can breathe? Think about it. Just to be, it's just amazing to be alive. Isn't it amazing? What do you want, Richard? What do you want? Tell me. I want to live fully. So that's right now, this moment. You just bring yourself to this moment, this moment, not the next one, this one, this moment, this moment. Bring yourself to this moment, Richard. It's in this moment that life is lived fully. There's nothing else. It's this moment that counts, Richard. You understand what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. Yes, but... I've, I've heard that often, I've tried that often. My idea is, the more I try it, the further I move away from it. I've even been in a Zen monastery for, for nine years, and this was the teaching every day. And the longer yes. I stayed in the monastery, the more I got estranged from myself. Well, that's the whole point of the monastery. Monastery is not something natural, it's not something real. It is for those very few people who are just unable to live in this world. You were not like that. Estranged from yourself is a way of putting things. What it is, is that you have to relearn surrender, to just be in this moment, not to want anything. Why do you want anything? Is it, is it making you uh, joyous to want something? No, not at all. Then why do you want something? I'm now living on my own, alone, and I'm trying to train myself to, to leave the wanting alone. I even have posters on my wall that wanting is an insult, and giving up wanting is to honor. And I, I try to teach myself like that, but it does not. So basically, Richard, you are making a choice to live a life of misery? Can one say that? <laughs> Can one say that, Richard? You're making that choice to live like this, right? It's true that I'm living a life of misery. And it's true that I must have taken the choice, that's logic, it cannot be another way. 
but I am not aware of how to make a new choice. I'm also not aware where did I make this choice for the misery I'm living in now. You don't have to make a choice, you have to make a decision. If you don't want to make that decision, you will not uh, live a life of joy. You decide, it's in your hands. If you want to live a life of joy, you decide that. You know how to do it. It's about bending and surrender to the Truth within. You're not ready to do that. You want to give in to the ego and its, its, its miseries. It's your choice, isn't it? You have made a decision to live in one way, no, you can make a decision. No, I don't want to live like this for the rest of my life. I don't want to be in a miserable state. I want to be in a state of joy. I decide now that I will not be in that state of misery. I decide that I will be in surrender to Truth, this whole body, this whole being, in surrender to the Divine. You don't want to be in surrender to the Divine. That's why you are not taking this decision. You want to be in surrender to the ego, and no one on this planet will ever be able to do anything. <laughs> you have to do it. No guru, no master, no teacher, no monastery, no enlightened being, no um, guide, n no one. No one is going to make you make that decision. You are going to make that decision yourself. And yes, of course, we all on this satsang, we all support you. There's not one person on the satsang who wouldn't support you. But the decision is yours. You are handing out that responsibility to everybody else. Somebody has to show this to me. No. No one is going to show it to you. You're a powerful man. You're so powerful that you have made a decision not to change this. Very powerful, nine years in a monastery. I don't think anyone on this satsang has been nine years in a monastery. And there is some truth to the fact that uh, being in a monastery like that for nine years could estrange you from yourself. That is That has some uh, truth to it, but you can... A man who has been able to live for nine years in a monastery is able to make the decision to live in surrender, bending to the Truth of his being, rather than giving in to the ego of that misery. He's capable of it. He hasn't made the decision, but he's capable of doing it. And you make that decision, it's your choice. Whether you make the decision or not, is your choice. So do you want to... Do you want to live miserable? Okay, then... Then you're going to be like this at 81 also, now you're 71. It's a decision, Richard. Don't put the responsibility outside yourself. It's your decision, if you want to be in surrender to the Truth, or you want to bend to the ego, that's your decision. And right now you're bending to the ego, without a doubt. I don't want to be so rough and tough with you, but this is how it is. Make up your mind, you can come on the next satsang and tell us, tell us all, we'll all be waiting to hear if you've made the decision or not. Sometimes I'm tough, I mean... <laughs> but not as tough, I'm sure you got a few beatings from your Zen teachers, right? With a stick. No? No, the stick is not... The stick mm -hmm. is not so painful. The living and... the life I'm living is much more painful. That's your decision. Now you make the decision not to live like this. To look at the beauty of this existence, if you close your eyes to it, then you open them now. Open your eyes and see what's around you. Look at the beauty of this existence, look at the flower. Look at... just take a look at the beauty of a flower. I know people have told you all this and you know everything and you've heard everything, but you have not made the decision for the Truth. Now you've made a decision for the ego, it's very obvious. So. You can decide now for the Truth, it's in your hands. Let's see, we'll see you again on the Satsang, I'm sure. Maybe with that decision. Namaskar, Richard. See, you're smiling now. 
I think that decision might actually be happening. Maybe. Let's see. Namaskar. Have a nice, have a nice decision making process. <laughs> and don't forget the truth. Don't forget the master of the being. Yes. Namaskaram, Marajika. Namaskaram, Richard. So I've been on this satsang several times. I don't know if you recognize me. I'm the one who has this loyalty difficulties with a traditional Advaita master and also trying to integrate your teaching. I've come to increasingly accept that my practice so far has strengthened my tendency to be disembodied. I had a father who committed suicide, I had siblings who were diagnosed as schizophrenic, and a sibling also who committed suicide. It was a lot of pain in my childhood, and also then self-inflicted pain by stupid or just uh, decisions which weren't good for me, which came from trying to run away. So this uh, habit, to try to run away is very deeply ingrained. And my question is, well, I understand that your teaching is inviting me to end this running away, to finally get back into the body. And I have tried this to follow your advice. I did many, many uh, Ashtanga Namaskars, and I tried to be in the here and now. But it is like uh, my system is self-defending. I wanted, and at the same time, I'm so afraid to face all the pain that has accumulated over a lifetime. Maybe to clarify a little bit what you're saying, from what I've understood, you uh, did practices that basically took you out of your system into cosmic experiences, and you have realized that uh, that was running away from the present tense, and that that has not brought you what you sought in this life, but you're also afraid to re-enter the system and take charge of system, because that would then mean that you're, you would have to confront um, all that pain that you say has accumulated. So as far as that pain that has accumulated, it hasn't, it's past tense. You have to understand that there's only this moment that counts. Yes, I do know that, you know, there are times when one gets catapulted into a, into an ego state of pain, but the reality and the truth of this existence is that it's this moment that counts. You have training, I do remember you having said on a satsang that you were in a monastery of some sort for 10 years, if I'm not mistaken, and that's a long time to be in a monastery, and if you have the discipline to be able to sit in a monastery for 10 years, you can do pretty much anything, and that would mean disciplining yourself to bring yourself to this moment. Every time the thinking pulls you into the past to understand that that is not now. You're not in a mental institution, you're not schizophrenic, you're not, you know, bipolar, or you're, you're someone who is a spiritual seeker who is now being um, pushed into the next step of seeking, which is to come back into yourself, to be present and to accept the existence of this moment, and that is what you discipline yourself to do. It is also important to simply open those eyes to look at what is in front of you, at the sun, at this enormous um, miracle that you are experiencing. It is not something common in this universe to be embodied. It just simply isn't. There are seven billion um, embodied beings as we know it for the moment in any case. And even if there are beings in other parts of our uh, universe, they are not like us. So it's important to just see the miracle of this existence. It's something miraculous, and to spend time looking at the past and delving into all of that is not going to strengthen you as a spiritual seeker. You, you don't have any excuses, you have the discipline to do it. Now it's about taking it up. It's also about your loyalties, as you were talking about uh, to your to your 
guru. See, it's great to have a guru, it's great to have someone who inspires you, it's great to have a third one and a fourth one, but it's essentially about the Antar Guru, you know. Yes, the external Guru will support that journey if you allow the person to do it. If you don't, at least go inward and understand that as you re-enter your system and as you uh, populate your body, as you become more terrestrial, more corporeal, you're going to be able to feel that center. It's there somewhere. I mean, even materially, there's a center to the body that cannot be disowned. And so, you're pulling yourself into this present moment. There's nothing to the past. Why look at the past at all? Are you, are you getting a special meal on your table because you're allowing yourself to think of the past? You've been a monk for 10 years. Don't allow yourself to think about the past. Do you want to live the rest of your life in sanity, in thisness, in presentness, and with dignity? Then that's what you're going to have to do, because otherwise you're going to become a strange bird. And that's not what you want to become. Although you call yourself Asterix the Gallia, he wasn't a strange bird either. So, it's time to just, yeah, exactly, just smile, be present, be here and now. Pull yourself into the present moment. Use the discipline you learned as a monk and as a spiritual seeker to pull yourself into this present moment. And now you attend the satsangs, you have a certain framework in which you feel well, because you keep appearing here. Uh, acknowledge that. You have a confusion with your Guru and, and uh, the one who's here, that's fine. Those are confusions everybody has, it's not a big deal. The point is, you're here, you're smiling, you're present, and you're not going to give in to the past, that's very important. Else you're not a spiritual seeker, then you can go out there and suffer like everybody else does. That's your choice to be in this satsang. So then go with it, be courageous, don't be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. The other thing is worse, where you've been all these years, that's worse. And find yourself a partner, look around, there are some nice pretty women, find yourself somebody who's, who also wants a partner, just be normal and enjoy this beautiful thing called living. That is what the spiritual seeker does. They don't go into cosmic experience and leave this world behind them and think that that's what a spiritual life is, it's not. Period. Yes, and one smile, please. Yes, that's good. Enjoy this living, it's rare in this universe. It's something rare to be in a body, to be here and now. It's so rare. You're not an asteroid, be glad about that. Yes. Namaskaram. Namaskaram. I'm very happy that I still get the opportunity. And the first thing I would like to say is thank you, thank you. It's so beautiful to be here. Uh, and it's not so much a question, I'd like to share some uh, minor um, incremental changes which were happening. Uh, Richard, is this is a question and answer satsang. Then I come up with a question, I don't share. Okay. Yeah. So, the point where I have difficulties is, uh, you told me uh, to uh, be giving, to move into giving, yes. and uh, uh, somehow I try to, but it does not happen. I, I try to help people, they don't need my help, or I think of helping or doing something and it doesn't seem to be the right thing. It seems mm -hmm. I'm so clumsy to make the first steps, so if you could uh, help me with that, to move into giving. What I feel, Richard, is that you've started out on a new process, you know, you've spent many, many years of your life actually 
in enlightenment processes, to put it simply, expanding consciousness into the cosmic experience. Now you're moving back into bodily experience, into materiality, into physical experience. It takes time, you know, even to learn how to give. It takes time, don't be too harsh on yourself. Put a smile on your face, it's already great that you've... that you're actually taking this up, this sadhana of giving, um, and yes, you will be clumsy at it, because you you have to descend into the materiality of the body, even learn how to move less clumsily, probably. So, don't worry about it, it's small baby steps you're taking now, and gradually, as you keep on trying, one day you'll be able to give something to somebody in a very flowy way, and you'll be surprised, and you'll have a smile on your face, and you'll go, well, what is this now? You know, this is something new, this is something interesting. It's not about helping people, nobody needs your help. It's not about helping someone, it's about giving into situations, or giving something to someone. Or even smiling at someone on the street, that is also a form of giving. I'm not saying you have to go around grinning at everybody uh, on the street, they'll probably think you're mad then, but you know what I mean. It's about being in a state of giving, you're here as an instrument of the Truth, to serve. That's the posture. You're here as an instrument of Truth, to serve. Of course, the ego will interfere, of course, you'll have your own little agendas, and you keep catching yourself, you keep catching yourself, and that's that adventure, because you had, you know, you had said that for you, life had no meaning anymore, but this is the meaning of life, it is, and, and already I see you really you know, you've changed a lot, and now you take up that, yes, I'm clumsy, yes, I make mistakes, but I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to smile at a person, to put some joy in their life, or I'm going to call somebody I know and just say, hi, I was thinking of you, how are you doing? Just things like that, for someone like you, those are big starts. And then gradually it'll expand, and gradually there'll be people around you, who are ready to receive from you, whatever you have to give which is born of the Truth, of course. This holds for everyone in this satsang, not just for you. You know? And you're looking, I mean, you're looking a different human being. Actually, let's say you're looking like a human being now, which you weren't before. <laughs> and you have a smile, and you're looking fresh, you're looking younger. This is how life is, this is a singular opportunity in the Universe. We haven't found human beings anywhere else in the, in the Universe as yet and we probably won't ever. So let's take this up as something unique, and, and stop torturing ourselves. It's a unique thing to be a, a human, and it's also very unique to see oneself as an instrument of the Truth. And then all you're doing is that, and yes, you are clumsy now, because obviously if you've not been in your body for so long, then you would be. Gradually, you'll start settling back into the body, and there will be this joyousness that starts to emerge, it already is emerging. And yeah, maybe a partner then, maybe someone you can share your life with, travel with, things like that. Or do seva, more than anything else, that brings the greatest amount of joy to anyone, you know? Yes, thank you, Maharishika. Namaskar, Richard. You are invited to a live online satsang with Maharishika Priti this Sunday. To know more, click the link in the description below.